assistant narrator Richardson here again. And you know what? Thank God I don't ever remember this being a thing in McDonald's in England. (sighs) Anyway, let's get on, shall we? Item number 6977. Restriction level, level 2. Containment class, safe. Disruption class, dark. Risk class, caution. Assigned site, area 179. Site director, director Joseph Barrow. Research head, researcher Julia Dunn. Assigned task force, not applicable. Special containment procedures, A remote surveillance system monitors SCP-6977's containment cell. Children may not enter Area 179 unaccompanied. Per Addendum 6977.2, investigation into anomalous activity from the McDonald's Corporation is a top priority. Description SCP-6977 is a McDonald's Playland Officer Big Mac climber. A playground attraction resembling former McDonald's mascot officer, Big Mac. The primary law enforcement in McDonald land, featured in commercials until a rebranding exercise in 1985. Children may climb into their head via a small entrance on the back of the tubular base and peer out the bars of the attraction as if in a jail cell. SCP-6977 displays signs of sapience. The anomaly moves the top portion of its head autonomously when communicating with children under 9 years of age. Individuals over 9 cannot perceive SCP-6977 speech. When the top half of SCP-6977's head descends, the bars remain static, piercing the structure's upper bun. The anomaly expresses pain from the punctures, though all wounds inflicted heal over time. SCP-6977 attempts to lure children it communicates with into its head for consumption. Objects inside SCP-6977's head will disappear upon the head's complete closure and a varyingly long mastication period, leaving behind only minor viscera. Foundation personnel discovered SCP-6977 after the disappearance of a six-year-old Jagit demon at a McDonald's play place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The attraction had remained at the location without notice for 30 years prior. Besides minor reports from children at play of pained groans and wheezes, Foundation investigators believe it only gained the ability to move its head when its bars had deteriorated enough. Addendum 6977.1 Initial Interview Log After ascertainment of SCP-6977's anomalous properties, Dr. Dunn brought her child, 7-year-old Elizabeth Dunn, to Area 179 for an interview with the anomaly. The younger Dunn acted as a transcriber. Playing Log Now Dr. Dunn and two armed guards escort Elizabeth Dunn into SCP-6977's containment cell. SCP-6977's head starts moving. A child. A tasty child for me to eat. You do talk. I talk. Yes, I do talk. I'm a fun talking burger. Why don't you crawl inside? I can't. Mummy told me to ask you some questions and then I can get a treat. I... oh, fuck. Fuck. No, not here. What does fuck- I eat one goddamn child and I get sent to the containment freaks. Fuck, you're all the worst. At this point, brown fluid leaks from where metal bars pierce the top half. Damn, that's mean, Mr. Burger. Fuck you, you goddamn delicious sack of organs. I just want to eat some bones. You- you said you eat children? I'd eat some more if I wasn't a kiddie attraction. I ate 12 kids a day in my prime. Such halcyon days. I don't even know who you are, Mr. Burger. I'm Officer Big Mac, damn it. This is horrible. Goddamn double-crossing white face. He could eat 20 of the suckers in 10 minutes. Who? You know the one. Don't say his name. He could be listening. I just wanted to ask you some questions. Question number one. How did you gain sapience? Sapience, sweetie. Sapience. I don't know. Long as I've ever lived. 
What kind of question is that? I can tell you 30 goddamn years as a pole nearly made me lose sapience. Fuck. I need a limb. Question number two. Just let me have them. They're right there, dangling in front of me. Juicy, juicy floppers. You can't eat me, Mr. Burger. How do you even grow a burger head anyways? You, you grow from a burger plant. Where else would you grow from? Are you born with a body? No, it's a plant. You, it snaps off the stalk and the limbs sprout out the- Do you eat burgers? No, you psycho. This is why they got rid of kids from there. Well, that and the whole no witnesses thing. Stupid scrumptious bastards. From where? You know, you, being the person reading this file, you know more than anyone else. I'm not risking it myself. 1977. Never forget. Well, it was, uh, nice talking to you. I've got to go now. Bye. No, don't go. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I swear it. I'm telling you- If you tell me the name of the place, I'll, uh, give you the biggest child I can. <gasps> For me? Ripe? Plump? All those words. Oh, thank fuck. I'll tell you all you need to know about McDonald Land. Okay. Un and attendees leave the cell. Hey, wait. Oh, mother of fuck. Just feed me, damn it. I'm a good cop. As a reward for aiding containment efforts, Elizabeth Dunn's request for a Burger King meal was approved, subsidised by the containment budget. Addendum 6977.2 Collected Documents Following Addendum 6977.1, Area 179 filed a Razor inquest for mentions of McDonald Land. No uploaded Foundation intranet documents were found. Further requests emphasising the concerning nature of SCP-6977's awareness of the Foundation and a lack of other McDonald's-based anomalies on record led to Razor searching its physical archives. Three documents were found. First document. Containment proposal submitted 10th of the 19th, 1976. Abstract. With the raid against NX191, McDonald Land imminent, the Foundation requires an inconspicuous and reasonable cover story for the Nexus' sudden disappearance. We propose a faux legal battle between Sid and Marty Croft and the McDonald's Corporation. In such a case, Sid and Marty Croft would sue McDonald's for plagiarising characters from the TV series HR Puff and Stuff in their McDonald land advertising campaign. McDonald's losing such a case would reasonably result in a drastic altering or halting of the McDonald land campaign. We would requisition professional actors to play the parts of the representatives from both companies, advertising agents and judges. In recompense for false legal proceedings, via our contacts with Henson Associates, Inc., we would provide Sid and Marty Croft with financial assistance. Please contact the NXMCD Site 25 Office of Containment Proposals for a full copy. Document 2, Site 25 Memo. In preparation for the raid on NX191, please attend sessions on the nomenclative detachment. It is imperative that POI 982 is not referred to by name. No POI 982 exists in Foundation records. Document 3. Transcript of found videotape labelled Send to 25. Heavy video distortion. Tape clears to a shaky perspective, hiding behind a wooden crate bearing a Golden Arches logo on its side. Operator appears located inside a massive warehouse. The purple walls bear the same golden insignia. Giant hamburgers with wheels and motor controls line the sides. The camera blurs and zooms in. Two figures, a burger-headed humanoid, Officer Big Mac, and POI 982, classified, stand in the frame's center. Big Mac backs away from POI 982, with his hands up in defense, POI 982 steadily approaches. <laughs> it was never about downsizing, was it?
Listen, Mac, it's nothing personal. I already did the same thing with McCheese. We're on the same side. You're a good cop, Mac. Too good. Can't risk snitches. Now, can we? Officer Big Mac backs against a hamburger car, placing his hands on the top bun. I can help you. Classified. I can't. POI 982 snaps their fingers. Tape picks up a cracking sound. Officer Big Mac's body conjoins as a blue tubular base, immobilizing him. Dad, please. The perspective zooms out and moves from the scene as the camera picks up a metallic scraping sound. A red gloved hand grazes by the lens before the video turns off. There is no current Site 25. The former Site 25 supposed location, according to historical listings, is currently occupied by a McDonald's franchise. I have a feeling I know who that person of interest is. Shame we can't say his name. It's easy. Honestly. Anyway, my voice is kind of going. I think I've got cold. So yeah, I'll see you later.